we can have that experience in our lives God can do something individually so it's an individual thing but it's also it does enter a group phenomenon at the very end of human history so I could say it's a privilege to be living at this time verse history because we are in a sense lat um, latter rain people aren't we but don't forget it also has an individual experience in our lives we can have this individually so it refers individually in an individual process of the early rain in our lives bringing us victory and the latter rain bringing us to maturity but it also refers to, to a collective experience as a whole in the end so look at salvation history as a um, laid out pattern God began with the Pentecost he did something wonderful but at the close of the gospel in Revelation chapter 14 the first angel God is gonna have a marvelous demonstration let me read a quotation for you I don't have it up on the board referring to the salvation history corporate sense it says this is found in a book called great controversy 611 as the former rain was given in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the opening of the gospel Pentecost when Jesus left he poured out the Holy Spirit upon them to cause the upspringing of the precious seed so the latter rain will be given at its close for the ripening of the harvest remember Revelation chapter 14 that is a harvest chapter well here's another question I have do we need it that's obvious right that's a rhetorical question do we need it well let's really ask the question folks we do need it right well is it essential do we need it in the sense of is it essential or is it just beneficial just icing on the cake oh it's both okay a lot of people just think of it as icing on the cake oh it's great to have but we can do without it's icing it's great icing but I think it's more than that can we get through the end without the latter rain no well let's look at why well there's a few accomplishments in the latter rain and I'm not gonna go all through all the information but these things are basic practical information we can glean from many texts and many statements but what, what are the accomplishments of the latter rain well it's gonna complete the sealing process in us uh, we can't manifest the character of God without the work of the Holy Spirit right the work of the Holy Spirit is very much intimately involved in all of this the fruits of the Spirit in fact the fruits of the Spirit is more rightly said the fruit it's singular of the Spirit is all those wonderful things another accomplishment of the latter rain is to give God's message to a dying world more effectively you know it can't be a human enterprise it can't be just a humanly um, human effort alone it has to be buttressed by the Holy Spirit and his work in us there's another third aspect to the latter rain which I want to talk about is that it, it strengthens us for the time of trouble ever think about the end oh I'm scared I'm not gonna be able to make it through we forget that God is going if we cooperate with God he's gonna give us something to strengthen us so why are we so concerned beforehand shouldn't we more be prepared for that latter rain to give us the strength to go through it rather than worry beforehand well here's a uh, statement I love I put it in here listen to these words and this is a little sobering and this really brings it to when the rubber meets the road unless we are daily advancing in the ex, uh, ex uh, exemplification of the active Christian thank you Christian virtues we shall not recognize the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain so unless we're partaking of that early rain you could say we're not going to recognize the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain now here's the clencher it may be falling on hearts all around us now I've been with groups of people churches who are all earnestly praying for the latter rain now I must say they're praying more for things they're not praying for a person that's why they don't have the effect that they should have but they're praying and they're praying and praying and I've often had this this quotation in the back of my mind well how do we know that when the Holy Spirit is given we're gonna be able to receive it because it says here it could be falling all around us imagine we're praying it's falling on John it's falling on Joe it's falling on Nathan it's falling but I could not receive it but we shall not discern or receive it friends I want to be able to recognize it I want to be able to receive it so let's talk about this a little bit how can we receive the latter rain because that's the issue I want to flourish I want to see that precious fruit in my life don't you uh, it's not a, um, uh, a discouraging thing it's an exciting thing to know that what God created you for can be a reality so how do we get it it's important how do we get it though here's a quotation I love filling empty vessels you know in the Bible vessels if you looked it up are a symbol of people remember when Jesus at the first 
miracle wedding in Cana, his mother came up to him and said, are you going to do something about uh, the lack of wine here, grape juice? And uh, Jesus said, well, my time hasn't come. Well, obviously the time came. And he told, we do you have any vessels here? And they took how many vessels? So six large water pots, right? Filled them with water, and they became grape juice, right? Did you know if you go through and you count how many disciples had at that time, he had exactly six in his calling? So those six water pots and what he did was a lesson to the disciples of what he wanted to do in their lives. Work that out sometime. But in the Bible, there's many texts that says vessels are a symbol of people. Now here's this quotation. Are we emptying our hearts of what? All selfishness. Well, if we're vessels, you know, friends, let's, let's be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we're filled with our own agendas, our own selfish ways, and there's no room for anything else. If you took this pot here, you filled it with your own water from your own cistern, then you put it out in the rain, are you going to get filled with any good rain, any good water? No, there's no room. So if we're filled, if our hearts are already filled, it can't receive what God has to prepare for us. Are we emptying our hearts of all selfishness and cleansing them preparatory to receiving the latter rain from heaven? It's a neat quotation or a neat uh, Bible verse. I believe it's in Ezekiel chapter 36 where God says, I will sprinkle clean water on you to cleanse you. That's the early rain experience. What God wants to do in our hearts is to help us, to prepare us to receive the blessings that he has in the latter rain. In the very end of human history, God wants to give a corporate group of people an experience that they've never had before.